Hello. We want to welcome you to the Salazar 21 event, our tribute to the life and legacy of legendary journalist Ruben Salazar. I'm Lori Ochoa, the current president of Latino Journalists of California, CCNMA, the oldest Latino journalism organization in the country. And I'm Luz Villarreal, board member and chair of today's event. Since 1999, we set out to honor excellence in journalism and the spirit of Ruben Salazar. This afternoon, we honor our National Ruben Salazar Awards in three categories, digital, print, and television radio. We'd like to thank our national judges from around the country and from different platforms. They are Gilbert Bayon, editor of St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Dino Kiecki, University of El Paso journalism professor, former El Paso Times managing editor, and former administrative editor of San Antonio Express News. Mary Helen Campa, Deputy Bureau Chief Southern Region at CBS News. Ernesto Ernie Morello, Vice President of Digital News, Hearst Television. And Maria Newman, Senior Staff Editor at The New York Times. Okay, let's get started with today's awards. The first category is TV and radio. The finalists are from KVPR in the San Joaquin Valley, Maddie Bolaños, and the piece, Deaths Among Financially Vulnerable Latino Immigrants in Kings County shot up by 90% in 2020. Listen. He was very hardworking. He never missed a day of work, never. She says he'd go to work even when he was sick. They're undocumented and as low wage workers couldn't afford to take a day off. But when Medina started feeling sick in late February, she says she immediately told her boss at the small restaurant where she worked. She self-isolated in their second bedroom. She told Cruz Mendoza she might have COVID. He brushed it off, she says. He didn't believe COVID was real, but she took it seriously. The next finalist is from NBC4 and Telemundo 52 in Los Angeles. John Cariz Klimek and the piece Seeking justice for Steven Lopez. Watch. Flavia Hernandez says she was crying and screaming for God to save her son. 22 year old Steven Lopez was shot, riding his bike just feet from his home doorstep. We're right outside his house. Right. LAPD West Bureau homicide detective John Limbury is charged with finding out why. It happened March 18th, 2018, in the Mid-City area of LA. So it's been three years and I'm still basically at the same place I was two weeks into this investigation and Steven deserves better than that. And the third finalist comes from Telemundo 52 Los Angeles. Enrique Chiabra, Lanette Arauz, Jorge Lopez, Gustavo Barrios, and Marcela Navarrete for the piece Luchan por Existir. Watch. Son marcas que no la dejan despertar de la pesadilla. Fueron 16 puñaladas que me dieron. Me veo en el espejo y, y veo las cicatrices. Se me salen las lágrimas. El miedo todavía la persigue y ha borrado la sonrisa que una vez adornaba su rostro. No duermo. Cierro los ojos y se me viene a la mente todo. Esa fatídica noche, la muerte rondaba y se escondía bajo la sombra de la luna. En mi angustia solo le decía a Dios, perdóname por todo lo que yo he hecho. Pero no me quiero morir, Liz. And the winner is Luchan por existir, Telemundo 52. And here is Enrique. Wow, thank you so much. We are, we are really happy. To, uh, congratulations to the finalists. Uh, and thank you so much to my co-workers, Inet, Jorge López, Marcelana Mapete, Gustavo Barrios. All of you put so much effort into this piece. Um, so I'm just really, really happy. And this is a team effort, as I always say. Um, also, thank you so much to the Translatina Coalition and Bienestar. These are two um, LA-based organizations here in Los Angeles that are, um, they provide so many resources uh, to our LGBTQ plus community. So thanks to them for trusting Telemundo and us uh, on doing this story this year. It's a special series that we did last year. So thank you so much. We're really, really happy. In the print category, the finalists are from La Prensa San Diego, Arturo Castaneras for the piece, Will MTS Death Bring About Real Change? The op-ed piece was about the death of 24-year-old Angel Zapata Hernandez, 
When two transit security guards attempted to detain him, the case had been virtually unnoticed because the police report was immediately sealed and the death was described as the arrest of a man acting erratically who suffered a medical emergency while being arrested. The county ended up paying out a $5.5 million settlement with the Hernandez family. Arturo Castaneras looked at the message sent to the public. An innocent person was killed for no reason, except that he fell under the control of law enforcement officials and paid with his life. And the public was kept in the dark. Our next finalist is from the Fresno Bee. For the piece, all they want is opportunity. Reporter Nadia Lopez's story is about unaccompanied minors seeking a new life in the Fresno County city of Mendota, often referred to as the Cantaloupe Center of the world. Our final finalist in this category is from the LA Times, Stephanie Mendez. For the piece, a Latina void in podcasting, the women of Locatora Radio are all over that. It profiles the creators of Locatora Radio and their high energy, sex positive, racially aware podcast. And the winner is Arturo Castaneras from La Prensa San Diego. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we're honored to have been nominated. Congratulations to the other nominees. Those are great pieces. Thank you to the association. Uh, thank you to the national judges. Uh, we follow a lot of stories that uh, a lot of the media here in San Diego ignore. And the Latino community is very important. On Wednesday, we just celebrated our 45th anniversary of the newspaper, La Prensa San Diego. And I'm only the third publisher in this long history. And uh, it's an important thing to do. We get a lot of criticism because we speak truth to power. And we think that's a very important thing that we as journalists have to do, especially in underserved communities. So thank you for your work. We're honored to have been nominated. Thank you so much for the award. In the digital category, the finalists are from the voice of OC, Reina Gonzalez and Roberto Santana Jr. for the piece, I hope they put themselves in our shoes, profiling an Orange County Latina living through the pandemic. It was part of a nationwide series of unemployment gathered by the New York Times to document the lives of Americans without work during the coronavirus. Next, Patricia Nazario for the digital piece, Backstreet to the American Dream, a digital documentary that looks at the food truck craze and the impact of longtime Lonchero trucks. Watch. We didn't see the whole food truck revolution coming or all these trucks jumping on the bandwagon. Hola, chica. Now there are two factions of this industry. You guys have won the great food truck race. Yeah. The conundrum is these two different types of trucks don't operate in the same way. Estamos en un problema muy crucial de las cosas que se están avecinando. Are you making bacon? Can you close your vents? The trucks that's already been out there that's run by mostly Mexicans or Latinos. I wonder how this gourmet thing has been affecting their business. And the third finalist from LA Taco and Capital and Maine, Jeanette Villafania and Jack Ross for the piece, Fines and Confiscation, explaining LA's arbitrary food cart law the county uses to criminalize street vendors. A deep dive into the pitfalls of the city of Los Angeles and the county's regulations of street vendors. The piece takes us through the often brutal actions taken by law enforcement, assisting code enforcement, and the vendor's future often left in limbo. And the winner is Jeanette Villafania and Jack Ross, LA Taco, Capital and Maine. Oh my God, well, thank you so much. Literally, I'm in shock. I still can't believe it. Um, I'm very proud of this. I don't know, I'm just really excited. I wanna say thank you to LA Taco, Capital and Maine. Jack, who, you know, we both worked on this and it's not our first piece together. It was kind of like our second piece that we did where we really tried to ourselves understand why are vendors still getting ticketed? Why are they still getting fined? Why are they still being targeted? Um, so I'm just, uh, I, I can't, I have no words, um, but just thank you CCNMA for again, recognizing these types of stories. And um, like I said last time to los vendedores ambulantes de Los Angeles, gracias. Estas historias no son nada sin ustedes y sin sus voces. So muchas gracias. And just, just thank you. I literally, I, I have no words. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This is such an incredible honor. Um, Janet and I are just completely thrilled. Um, and I'd like to thank 
um, everyone at Capital in Maine who supported me uh, as a as a writer, uh, Stephen Mikulin, uh being a brilliant editor, Danny Feingold, publisher at LA Taco, Ka um, Javier Cabral and Mariah Castaneda. Um, this is an important story that Janet and I were really um, troubled by, I think, and also really um, glad to have the chance to cover. Um, so I want to thank all the brave, brave vendors who spoke with us and um, in particular, Matt Geller um, and some folks at um, Public Council, um, as well as Lyric Kelkar and Rudy Espinoza and Richard Gomez uh, at Revolution Cards. So thank you so much. Um, we're thrilled and we're, I want to thank the um, Ruben Salazar Awards for, for recognizing our story. It means a lot. All right. Well, we want to thank all of our winners and our finalists. I'm so inspired by all of your work um, and our judges for, for, for all their hard work on this. Um, what you do is so important. We, we want to support your work. Um, and uh, I just want to mention that CCNMA's 50th anniversary year is next year in August. Um, uh, and we're going to have a whole year of celebrations for that. And uh, we're also, we have a lot of archives that we are from 50 years that we're trying to maintain. We have a GoFundMe page uh, to support the care of those archives. And I also want to thank uh, our earlier panelists uh, from the Ruben Salazar conference. Um, you know, we had, we had Robert Lopez um, with Joe Rosso and Jesus Trevino who talked about the death of Ruben Salazar. And then we had Luz Villarreal talking with director Philip Rodriguez about Man in the Middle. And more than, I, one thing that struck me is that more than the death of Ruben Salazar was the courageous life of Ruben Salazar and the importance of the journalism he was doing um, and that we should be celebrating, not, not just investigating his death, but it's celebrating his life and being inspired by the journalism and that for the next generation, for all of us to keep going forward. And I want to thank all of you. So thanks, thanks to all of you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations.